We're at MWC 25 back in Barcelona again, and I'm here with Abdu Mudazir, who is Group CTO at Deutsche Telekom. Abdu, thanks so much for taking time in your schedule, as ever, to talk to Telecom TV. Always a pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. So um, let's start with one of the most important things for many telcos around the world, and that's uh, broadband capabilities. Can you give us an update on uh, where Deutsche Telekom is with its uh, fibre to the premises and 5G densification progress and how important this is strategically to Deutsche Telekom? Thanks for asking that question because it's really fundamental and it's important for us to offer the best connectivity experience. And for that, we continue to invest significantly in our 5G and fiber deployments across our European market. If you look at the progress we've made compared to last year, this year in 5G in Germany, we have 98% coverage in 5G in Germany. In Europe, we've reached 76%, which means excluding Germany, which is also a step that uh, we've improved significantly. We have more than 10 million homes now with fiber, which is great progress, both 10 million in Germany plus 10 million in, in the rest of our markets. So we've made a significant progress and we are building much more than everyone combined in our European markets. Okay, wow. Okay, so it's a real financial commitment, but the payoff should be, you know, more than, than what you're putting in. It's a long-term commitment. Yeah. We're not looking at a payoff uh, just in the next year, but it's already pays off in the way we deploy, in the way our quality is recognized, and that's exactly what we continue to do. And where is Deutsche Telekom with its uh, deployment of 5G standalone? So we have activated 5G standalone in our networks in Germany and a couple of European markets. So in Germany, we have 98% 5G standalone coverage, and which, of course, enables us to do a lot of great things in the consumer space we've talked about last year on the uplink capacity that we can provide for video use cases, video journalism that works very well in the European football championship. But what we recently also offer is a gaming slice for gaming enthusiasts who get really a low latency and the value of that low latency in gaming. And we can ask our youngsters and my son knows a thing or two about this. So, but this is exciting. As exciting as it is in consumer space, the most exciting thing for us to enable with 5G is the B2B space. Okay. And that's where we are working very closely with our industry partners that require a dedicated connectivity and services to allow for use cases that they see, be it manufacturing, healthcare, and that's something 5G slices allow us to do. Okay, excellent. Um, what kind of impact is the, the surge in AI engagement having on Deutsche Telekom's network architecture plans? How are you having to think about capacity planning in the AI era? Oh, a big, very big impact. And I'm glad because that's exactly our vision. Our vision is autonomous networks. And we talk about autonomous network means really networks that run, serve our customer in the best possible way with close to no human interaction. And that's the point with AI, we can bring our vision of autonomous network closer. We integrate AI in incident management in our NOx, which is now have been very successful, predicted AI, as well as now slowly generative AI. We are able to identify incidents in 70% of the time actually resolve them without any human intervention. And this is a great progress. We want to take it further to 90% or more. And I think AI integrating in our planning of fiber, I just talked about in Germany, we have rolled out already 10 million household, 2.5 million last year in one year alone. This requires huge amount of planning on the street. And we use AI in all of this from planning, deployment, operation, and that goes across our network and it has a significant impact. Okay. And in terms of the way that customers might use AI in the future, maybe with multimodal AI, are you thinking about how the network and might be able to deal with that kind of uses? Is it flexible enough with the automated capabilities to be able to deal with whatever customers might throw at the network? So at the moment, I would say it's really flexible for the use cases that we know of today. And right. that's exactly the main point, right? So by the way, we enable with our partnership with different partners like Perplexity and others, 
we integrate AI into our AI phones, for example, and play an aggregator role. And that, of course, we want the users to use multimodal AI capabilities. And now the question is, how does that affect our network? Luckily for us, a lot of the compute is happening at the first layer of age, which is the device. Okay. And that means there is hardly any additional uh, data transfer happening. And we don't see a big increase of data coming from the AI use case as yet. However, our network needs to be much more modular, much more user-centric to be able to serve the customer of the future. Okay. Now, another aspect of AI that's been talked about uh, more and more and here at MWC as well is the idea of uh, AI RAN and something that there's, uh, the AI RAN Alliance has been putting forward. What's your view on that? Is this uh, something that you're keeping a, a watching brief on? Is it something that you think you'll get involved with? Of course, T-Mobile is uh, involved in that alliance and, and, and obviously yeah. getting a lot of insights and getting to putting a lot into that. Yeah. No, it's actually, it's good. I mean, AI Run um, has a number of focus areas that I believe are really the right thing to do. For example, AI for Run, we are fully in. You see the, our Run Guardian agents where in a partnership with Google, we've been able to develop AI agent that helps us really plan, deploy and run our network and solve issues before the customers even sense it or uh, really see it. Uh, that means you can use AI in run in multiple areas. We are fully in. We support that. Now there's element of using AI to enable, so run to enable compute inference for enterprises and others, which is age computing. I think we have been as Deutsche Telekom at the forefront of age computing with mobile AGX initiatives, with uh, GSMA initiatives and a lot of that. And I believe there could be a time where edge computing be become more relevant. At the moment for me, using GPU in the radio side is too expensive, too power consuming, not yet there for us to deploy. That's why we welcome the initiatives. We will see we've been at the forefront of driving the edge computing. Edge starts from the device, goes into servers that you have in your room, to Iran, which is 40,000 sites in Germany, as an example. Right. That is something we have to see evolve. And at the moment, all of this is enabled with our strategy, openness, driving openness, driving intelligence in a secure way. Okay. Um, and then obviously, you know, at MWC, pretty much every company involved in this sector is here. Is the industry delivering to Deutsche Telekom what you need to be able to run your networks in the most energy efficient way? Because although this show might be predominantly about AI, uh, green networks is still such a massive topic and at the top of everybody's agendas. Absolutely. It's also at the top of our agenda. And I think if you look at the network today, we've made progress in becoming energy efficient. We have activated AI capabilities in our networks to be able to shut off layers to save energy when the users are not using it. At 3 a.m. in the morning, not many people will need the run to be using all the frequency layers. Now, that has saved us energy in the tune of 5 to 10 percent. But what we are talking about here, what we need as an industry is what do we need to do to save 80 percent, 50 percent? And that's for me the leap and for that, we really need to re-architect, re-imagine the network. A network today is designed for extremely high dimension to serve the most requirement at all times, which is good because we want to make sure that all customers get the best service. But it's also inefficient. And that's why we are talking about reimagining the network where a network is user-centric, only switched on when needed, and it's intent-based that knows exactly what do I need. You and I don't have the same requirement on network. There's no need the network to be booming with all the beams all the time. And that's the next level. And that requires a radical thinking. That requires reimagining the network. That's what we need from the entire industry. Okay. And, and just very quickly then, and with that in mind, um, are you factoring 
uh, 6G into to how you're thinking about the, the networks right now? Because we're just getting to that stage where 6G planning is becoming a real thing. Absolutely. I think we look, we drive innovation and we drive all the capabilities that we need and be it agentic AI, what we're doing right now, reimagining. We are also aware some of this requires standardization and standardization takes its time and 6G is going to be the next standardization effort for our industry. So yes, we are factoring in, but 360 needs to radically address the power consumption, radically address the resource utilization question, the use of spectrum efficiently, and of course, AI needs to be at the center of our thinking in 6G. It has to be AI native. So all of that are in our minds. We will drive also 6G in towards that direction, but we will not wait for 6G. Whatever innovation we can get our hands on through partnership, we will try to implement it starting from now. Okay, excellent. Abdu, as ever, great to talk to you. Thanks very much for your insights and enjoy the rest of MWC 25. Thank you very much. Always great to see you.